Hey, welcome back. We're in part two of an application called Coin Flip App. In this part of the application, we are going to do the coding that you see on the screen. So the things that we're going to code include we're going to create arrays, we're going to use a for loop, we're going to have something called a class, and then image resources are going to be changed on the fly, and finally we're going to look at something called a ternary operator, which will make your if statements much more concise. So this is uh, part of the code that we're going to be creating here in the next few minutes. We're going to create a class called coin, and you can see it has properties and some functions in it that we're calling methods. The ternary operator is also going to show up here. This is what the if statement is going to look like when we're done. So let's get started with the coding. Now we're at the point where we're ready to begin typing in actual code. So let's go into this button called flip coins and double click it. And you can see the new function is right here. So before we get started with any coding, we're going to create a new class. To create something, you right click on the project title, go down to add, and then we're going to choose the word class at the bottom. Now the word that we're going to put in here is coin. And so this project here is going to represent what a coin looks like. So a class is a complete study in itself. And what we're going to see is a very simple example. The first thing that a coin can have is a property. So I'm gonna type in the word prop on my keyboard. And then you can see there's type ahead helping. So I'm going to press the tab key twice. And you can see the kind of uh, example is given to us here. So the first part of a property is its status, whether it's visible or not. It's by default public. The next is the type of data that the property has. And I'm going to change this from an int to a bool. And now it says my property. I'm going to rename this as is heads. And then the next two statements are getters and setters. So this allows us to change this property. So think of a class as a piece of code that represents an object. So in the video games, you can have the ghost, you can have the player, you can have the alien, you can have a bullet, you can have a suitcase. You know, everything that you see that you can pick up, touch, shoot, throw, collect, move, those are all objects in a game. And so behind every object is a class like you see here. So in our simple game, we're going to have a coin. And the only property that our coin has is this Boolean, true or false. Is it a heads or not? And that's the simplest kind of game you could think of. Now the next thing I'm going to create is called a method. A method is really a function. And uh, when we're going to make this one, it's going to call flip coin. So flip coin is going to randomly choose either a heads or a tails for our coin. So to use anything in random functions, you have to use this class called random. So we define R as a new random object. And then once you have R, you can use that to generate new numbers. So R.next, and then in parentheses, tells you what range of numbers you want to pick from. That will generate a new random number. So it's like the computer saying, I'm thinking of a number between 0 and 10. Now we'll check to see if that number is greater than five, which is halfway across. If it is, then we'll make this coin a heads. Otherwise, we'll turn it into a tails. And so this is a function that will do a random assignment, heads or tails, to the coin. Now in a class, there's usually a function called a constructor. A constructor is called whenever there is a new coin created. And you'll see how this works when we start using the coins. But we need to have the code here first. So we create a function that has the exact same name as the title of the class. So coin with a capital C, because that's the name of the class with a capital C. In parentheses, we are going to have a Boolean parameter. So I'm going to pass in something called H, which is going to stand for heads. And then this, this is strange, but this dot heads equals H is going to tell the new coin that when we create it, we expect it to be assigned a true or false value. Now, what is this? Well, this refers to this instance of the coin, this example of the coin, this particular coin. That's what it means. So kind of odd to see for the first time what this is, but hopefully you can see how it works in just a moment. So this finishes off what we're going to define as our coin. We have a property called isHeads. We have a constructor function that will help us build a new coin. 
And then we have a method here that allows us to do something with the coin, flip the coin. So think of what you could do with a video game if you were creating uh, maybe a Mario Brothers. The coin could not only flip, but maybe it could be picked up, could disappear, it could move, it could explode. I don't know what you can do with coins in games, but anything that you can think of in a video game, you can create a method for. And then you'll obviously have to generate the graphics and everything to go with it. But the logic would go here in the C sharp code. Okay, I'm going to close the coin or just save it for now. And we'll probably ignore it for the rest of the time. We won't have to come back and change anything. All right, let's go back into the form one. Now, let's say I want to create some coins. So what we're going to create is called an array. An array is a list. It's a collection. And uh, you use these square brackets to define that this item, this variable called coins, is actually a list of coins. Now when we create a new list, we tell it how many coins we want to make. So I'm going to pick five for an example. Now I want to be able to set up the array of coins when the program starts. So I need to go back to the form designer and I'm going to double click in a empty space on the form. And when I do that, the new function called form one load will appear. So this will be the function that starts or triggers whenever the form is displayed for the first time. So it's like an initiation point. Now what I want to do is add a new coin to my list. So when you work with an array, you put in the word coins, square brackets, and then the coin number, and it starts counting at zero. I'm going to create a new coin. A new coin means I'm going to go to the class called coin and generate a new coin. So that's where a class comes in. We have just created an instance of the coin. And you can see that it needs to have a parameter for the letter H. It's going to be a true or false value. It doesn't really matter which one you pick, but let's go with true. Now I would like to generate a whole bunch of coins. So I'm going to copy and paste my coin zero and just say all my coins that I'm going to create are going to start with the value of true. So I will create from zero to five. Now, how many coins do I have now? Well, it looks like I have five, but do I? I have actually six coins. So I am going to have a problem. This last one here called coins five is actually out of bounds. Out of bounds because I created an array at the top of the page that only has five items in it. And so item five is actually not the fifth uh, number that you put in there. The fifth item in the list is coin number four. So computers like to start with zero. So I'm going to take this out for now because I know that this will cause an exception. The program will say out of bounds uh, error and we'll probably demonstrate that. But for right now, let's just say uh, what this is. So inside of this uh, button click, I want to set the label. So the label.txt is going to display the values of each coin. Remember, I have a true false value called is heads. So I'm just going to push all these together into one string and put a comma between each of them. So is heads is the value for each coin. And for each of these, I have to count from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and uh, that's as far as I can go. So this should print off the value of each coin. Let's, let's run this and see what happens. Okay, I got the app up and running. Let's go ahead and click flip coins. And you can see that it says true, 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 true. A whole bunch of trues. Okay, let's change one of these. Now, if we were to come down into coin number three, for example, and set that to a false, it's initiating the coin and the initial value is not true. Let's see what happens. Now, when we run the app and I choose flip coins, you can see that we have a false. So these lab this label here is showing the value of each coin. Obviously, we're not changing the actual flipping of the coin yet in the graphics, but we're getting there. So now we have an example of how to work with the uh, property called the uh, coins uh, is head. All right, so I'm looking at this code here, and I see I have five lines. This is repetitive. There is always a better way to do things if you have a lot of copy and pasting going on. So now I'm going to create a for loop. You can type in for and press the tab key twice. 
and it will complete the entire for loop for you. So extra typing is saved. Then we're going to leave the, uh, letter, the number i, or the letter i, as the counter variable. Now if I press tab, I can switch over to the upper limit, or the length, and I'm going to replace that with the word coins dot, and then length is the number of items in my array. So this will tell me five, basically. I'm going to go from zero to five, or up to five. So coins.length is the uh, number of items in the array. Then inside here, I'm going to create a new coin. I'm going to say coins at position i. So like 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And then I create a new coin, and every coin is going to show up with the false value to start with. So that's an alternative way to creating a new list of coins. So if you had 1,000 coins, this would be three or four lines, and it would save you tons of typing. Let's see if it works. I'm going to test it out and run it. OK, so I got the app running, and I choose Flip Coins, and it says they all have a false value. So it seems that I didn't break anything. Now I want to do an alternative way for printing the label as well. So instead of specifying each item in the array, I'm going to use a for loop here. So let's do a for i again, and uh, we'll do the coins.length is the length. Inside of the for loop, we're going to add something to the label.text. So you notice I use a plus equal sign for the assignment. That means we're going to append it. So this text equals whatever it had before plus something new. And so I'm going to add the same property and a comma between each of them. So this should work. I'm going to comment out the item below and let's test it again to see if this is doing what it's supposed to. So it looks kind of like it's working. However, I still have this thing called label one at the beginning and then five falses afterwards. So label one was the default value and I was appending to it. So we start by label one and then add to it. So I'm just going to change this to an empty label. Let's say text equals nothing. So that way it starts off as blank and then we add to it. Let's see if that helps. Okay, I run the application and now you can see that they just say false, 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 false. Okay, that seems to be working. Okay, so now I want to set the picture. If the uh, value for heads is true, then we'll set the graphic to true. If it's false, then we'll set it to tails. So I'm going to have to set an if statement in here. So I'm going to say if the coin zero is set to heads, if that is true, then we'll go ahead and set the picture of the picture box one to heads. So we use uh, something called properties.resources. And then you can see the values that are in the resources folder. So we have quarter heads already saved in there. And then the opposite is if it's not true, then we're going to set it to quarter.tails. OK, so now we've got ourselves a setting for the first coin. Now I'm going to copy and paste this. And we're going to change this later. So you're going to see a mess of code here for a little while. So I've copied and pasted. And now I'm going to go back and change this to coin one. And this is picture number two. And let's go down the list. OK, so I'm going to go through each one of these. Uh, coins, uh, coins number two is going to be assigned to picture box three. Coins three is assigned to picture box four. And so the coins, the array starts at number zero, and the picture boxes start at number one. So they're different by one. All right, so all this code here is supposed to set the pictures. Let's see if it works. OK, so they're all set to heads originally. And I choose Flip Coins. And you can see that they're all false. So they all turn to false. Now I'm going to go and change the uh, value here. So instead of false all the time, I'm going to set this to be randomly true or false. So I have a function or a method in my coin property called flip coin. I'm going to use that now. So inside the for loop where we're going to uh, work on the label, I'm also going to work on the coins. So I'm going to call the flip coin for each coin. So once I get the program running, you can see that uh, when I choose the flip coin, Sometimes they all come up heads, and sometimes they all come up tails. So there is some randomness going on, but 
it doesn't seem <laughs> very random if you get a coincidence that all five seem to change at the same time. There's a problem. And I can tell you what the problem is. And you would never figure it out without uh, having some reading and explanations. So flip coin is supposed to be a random event, and it's not random. Let's go look at the class called coin and see why. The problem here is when I create a new random event or a random object in the flip coin area, that this is very predictable. So if you create multiple copies of random, you're going to get the same results. Very odd. But anyway, let's take it out. And instead, I'm going to ask that Flipcoin be given a parameter of random r. Okay, let's save that. And now go back to our form one here. And I need to provide a random event here. So let's see if we can make this work better. I'm going to put in a random r equals a new random here. And then I'm going to pass that in so that this R is shared among all of them. All right, so now I'm flipping the coins and you can see that I'm getting some randomness now. They don't all come up to be true or false at the same time. And so that seems to solve the problem. All right, so I've got ourselves a uh, working application. Now I'm gonna fix a few things here and make it more efficient. So let's do that on the next video.